volumes of revolution. In this section we will explore another method we have for finding the volume of revolution. This is called the cylindrical shells method. All right, so for our introductory example, uh, let's find the volume of a solid created by rotating the region bounded by y equals 4x minus x squared and the x-axis uh, about the y-axis. All right, so as before, let's draw it. Uh, y equals 4x minus x squared. Uh, that's a parabola opening down, and I can factor that as x by 4 minus x, so it'll have x-intercepts of 0 and 4. All right, so a rough shape here, it's gonna look like that. And there's four, uh, bounded by that and the x-axis. So we're talking about this region right here. And we're gonna rotate that about the y-axis. So let me duplicate it over here. And now let's think about what we would have. So if I drew, if I tried using the idea that we had in the last section, I could draw a disk. I could draw a representative disk, a uh, washer. It would have to be a washer. But now think about that outer radius and inner radius. Since my thickness then would be a dy, I would have to have my, um, I'd have to have the outer radius and the inner radius both in terms of y. And if we look at this function, y equals 4x minus x squared, that's difficult to find the inverse. And in fact, it's not a one-to-one -one function, so we'd have to be very, very careful in finding the inverse and using it appropriately. So instead, we're going to develop a different approach. So now here's the different approach. Instead of thinking of a disk, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a shell of a cylinder. So let's let me think of let me think of this little rectangle. Think of this little rectangle and rotate it about the circle, uh, uh, about the x, uh, I'm sorry, the y-axis. So if I do that rotation, I get this cylindrical shell. It's not very thick. Its thickness is dx. There's its thickness. But what I have here is, if, if we sort of think about it, is I've created, in a sense, a circle. And so that circle has circumference. And so this shell, the shell volume, the cylindrical shell, would be equal to the circumference of the circle times the height of the circle times the thickness. Now, I know that the circumference of a circle is 2 pi times the radius of the circle. The height of the circle, not really circle, uh, the height of the cylinder, and then the thickness. Now, I'm going to call the thickness my dx. What about the height of the cylinder? The height of the cylinder, this is the height, hey, the height is just the function value. The height is the function value at some x. And what about the radius? Well, the radius of the circle is this distance right there, 
and that's just some x value. And so then when I build my integral, what I'm going to say is I'm going to go from here to here. I'm going to integrate from 0 to 4 of 2 pi times the radius. Now the radius is just x times the function, the height. Well, and my function is in this case 4x minus x squared and then dx. And if I wanted to, I can simplify this sum. I can bring the 2 pi outside. Integral from 0 to 4. And I can simplify this. This is what? 4x squared minus x cubed dx. And we can calculate this. And this ends up being 128 pi over 3. And so if we have situations where it would be difficult or maybe even impossible to find um, the outer radius and the inner radius to use the disk washer method, we can instead use the cylindrical shell method. And the idea here is we take the circumference of a circle, or cylinder I should say, times the height of the cylinder times its thickness. And if we can draw our representative cylinder or cylindrical shell, we can often just you know figure out the pieces to plug into the formula. All right, so in general, if we have a positive function over a b, then the volume of the solid generated by rotating the function over the y-axis is given by 2 pi times the integral from a to b of x times f of x dx. Again, the idea here is the x is the radius of the cylindrical shell, the f of x is the height of the cylindrical shell, and we integrate from left to right. And again, we're just adding up a bunch of very thin cylindrical shells. Find the volume of a solid created by rotating the region bounded by f of x equals x squared, y equals 0, and x equals 3 about the y-axis. This would be a good time to pause. Try this one out on your own. All right, let me go ahead and draw this. Uh, we have f of x equals x squared. Right, so I've got my basic parabola. y equals 0, that's the x-axis. x equals 3, all right, so let's say here's 3. So we have this region, and we are rotating about the y-axis. All right, so then let's see. If I think of this, since I'm rotating about the y-axis, what I'm going to think is I'm going to draw this little piece right here and its counterpart over here. And I have a cylindrical shell. Very thin. Right, dx thin. So then the volume, uh, well, let's, if that's the dx, what's the radius? The radius is x. And what's the height? The height would be x squared. So then my volume would be 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 3 of the radius times the height dx. And so then that's just 2 pi integral 0 to 3 of x cubed dx. And if you go through the calculations, this ends up being 81 pi over 2. 
Now this one we could have actually done using the, uh, the method we talked about in the previous section. This one can be done using uh, the disk uh, washer method. And if we think of the disk washer method instead, all right, if we draw that cross section, so I'm going to erase some of my, uh, my drawing here. If I think of this other method, all right, if I think of my disk, the outer radius is 3, and the inner radius would be the square root of y, and my thickness is dy, and so I could integrate from 0, from y equals 0, to y equals 9. And so if we think of it that way, my volume is pi times the integral from 0 to 9 of the outer radius, which is 3, square, minus the inner radius, which is the square root of y, square, dy. And if you calculate, you know, if you go through the, the calculus and you calculate this integral, it ends up being exactly the same. So in this case, we could have used either method. Um, I think the cylindrical shell method is easier in this situation. Find the volume of the solid created by rotating the region bounded by y equals 3 plus 2x minus x squared and x plus y equals 3 about the y-axis. All right, again, let me draw it. Um, y equals 3 plus 2x minus x squared. That's a parabola opening down. Um, can we factor that? Uh, let's see. That's negative x, well, negative, let me factor out the negative, x squared minus 2x minus 3. And so that is x minus 3 by x plus 1. So it has x intercepts a negative 1 and positive 3 opening down. x plus y equals 3. Um, well, that's the same as saying y equals uh, negative x plus 3. That's just a line um, with a slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept of 3. All right, so what do we have here? We have a parabola opening down with x-intercept of negative 1 and x-intercept of 3. Uh, notice that the y-intercept, if we let x equal 0, the y-intercept would also be 3. And so we'll get a shape. We get a parabola that does something like this. Uh, and then my line y equals negative x plus 3. That one's easier. It looks like this. And hey, it looks like we can find those points of intersection, right? At 0 and 3. That worked out nicely. And you know, you could have set them equal to each other to solve that. All right, and we're rotating that about the y-axis. All right, so if I rotate that about the y-axis, then I'm going to get something like this. Poorly drawn. All right, so there's the rotation. Now, again, this is a situation, if I were to use the disk method, sort of think about this. Uh, if I use the disk down here, I would have to use one set of functions for the r out and the r in. And, but if I looked at these disks up here, I would have to use a different set because the functions are going to be changing. And again, these aren't, you know, the the 3 plus 2x minus x squared, that's not a one-to-one -one function. It's going to be difficult to invert. Uh, instead, let me think of this right here. That There's my, my uh, here's a shell. Let's think of that shell right there. I apologize for my crude drawing. And if I think of that, well, I can figure out the radius. The radius is x. What's the height? The height would be the upper function minus the lower function. 
And so then the height would be the upper function, that's 3 plus 2x minus x squared. Subtract the lower function, negative x plus 3. And this simplifies, this is what, uh, uh, 3x minus x squared. And so then I can write the volume as the integral from 0 to 3. Uh, let's not forget the 2 pi. 2 pi times the integral from 0 to 3 of x, the radius, times the height, 3x minus x squared, dx. And we calculate the integral, 27 pi over 2. All right, one more example. Find the volume of the solid created by rotating the region bounded by y equals the square root of x, y equals 0, and x equals 1 about the line x equals 2. All right, let's draw it. y equals the square root of x. That does something like this y equals 0, so that's the x-axis, x equals 1. So let's say here's x equals 1, so then there's 2. All right, so we have this. So here's my, here's my region, but then I'm rotating about the line x equals 2. And so then I would get a sh its counterpart would look something like this on the other side. All right, now, um, either, you could use either um, the washer method or cylindrical shells on this one. They, they're not too difficult. You would have to invert the function to use the, uh, the washer method. Um, I, instead, though, I'm going to use cylindrical shells here. And so if I think here's my representative thickness and its counterpart. All right, now we need a radius and a height. All right, so what's the radius? What's that thickness? Well, the, if I know that this distance here, that's x, and I know that this distance is 2, then the radius would be 2 minus x. And the height is just the square root of x. So then I'm going to integrate from 0 to 1. Uh, let's not forget the 2 pi. I keep forgetting the 2 pi. And then integrate from 0 to 1. The radius times the, th uh, times the height. And so then we calculate this. The integral is, uh, well, 2 pi times 14 over 15, and so that's 28 pi over 15. All right, so that concludes the, uh, the section on cylindrical shells.